or should I say yellow? <laughs> Welcome to a video where I'm going to explain a little bit of my own personal thoughts about my newest piece titled Relativity Reimagined. It's named Relativity Reimagined because it's a remake of M.C. Escher's lithograph Relativity, as well as it has a lot to do with imagination. So this piece is the fourth piece in my series, The Awakening of the Senses, where I'm painting our physical senses in a spiritual sort of concept way. Like there's not really a good way to explain it. I'm figuring all that out still. And actually I will make another video about this series as a whole as I'm journeying through it because this is my first art series I've created and it's amazing to be able to integrate the wisdom that comes from these paintings as a whole and as a collective instead of just one single piece. So I'll make another video about that. But anyways, today I'd like to talk about this one. And this is the sense of sight in the series. And so you can see all of the eyeballs and there's these people here, eyeball people, and enjoy as I talk this video of this piece up close. So what is an awakened sense of sight? An awakened sense of sight for me is really about focus, perception, and different perspectives. And when talking about this from a spiritual way, it's really been quite a growth journey for me. My artwork has challenged my spiritual beliefs and has caused me to grow and rise up out of old belief systems. And I don't see these old beliefs as something that has been holding me back or falsehood. I see now these old beliefs also as something new and renewed because I'm also seeing it from a different perspective. The same stories and the same ideas and the same philosophy and the same doctrine, but from a different perspective. And it's really interesting to be able to move out of, let's say, like childhood belief systems, which I talked a lot about in the very first video in this series, uh, because it's been a very fearful place for me in the past to be able to uh, say goodbye to things that I've grown out of. And it's not necessarily that I have to say goodbye to them completely. I don't have to say this is truth and this is false. And this is really a lot about what this painting's about because you have all these different stairways and different perspectives looking on the same object. And it's everyone in all of humanity collectively looking at the earth and looking at humans and looking at the uh, just the systems and even our own personal identity. We're all looking at things in different ways and with different perspectives. And so it's really not to say that one person is false and wrong and the other person's right and that we have to argue back and forth to figure out who's right and who's wrong. It really is to say that none of us actually know exactly what it is that makes up this spirituality that we have labeled, whatever we've labeled spiritual or spirituality, and none of us can really actually explain it. And even if we could explain it, could we understand it? And even if we could understand it, could we live it? So it's kind of a little bit about that. And this painting really has a lot to do with being able to understand that we don't always have it all figured out, but also understanding that that's okay. And just in these journeys, like I thought, what better picture than N.C. Escher's lithograph, Relativity, to explain different perspectives and just the idea of relativity, that title. If you were to Google what relativity means, it's insane. It literally blew my mind and I can't even explain it. It's like scientific and stuff. And, um, but it's really just saying that everything's relative. So it's important to have different perspectives than other humans. And it's very important for some of us to, like I feel called to live from an optimistic place. And some of us might be called to live from uh, working in that dark work. And like I've done some dark work and stuff, but it's not necessarily that all humans have to um, be realistic all the time and not all humans are made and built with the personality to be able to handle the darkness and sadness of the world 
And as much as it's important to have awareness around those things and focus on those things, it's not for everyone. Because when I focus on those things, I get drawn up into them and uh, sucked down and just like torn down by them. Whereas some people are able to go into those deep, dark places for others and for humanity and be able to transmute it and transform it and refine it and renew it. And so part of this piece is about just like the earth and humans and just, I feel so deeply that humans and the planet would be healed and not only just like sustainably, because certainly I love nature and I love our planet and it's absolutely mind blowing that we even have a planet and that it's spinning in orbit and it's just like everything's working perfectly. We've got water, we've got sun, the moon comes up at night and makes it dark and we can sleep. So there's just endless things that we can focus on and sight has to do with focus. There's endless things that we can focus on that are wonderful about this earth and this planet. But also it's important to envision health for the collective humanity's psyche and consciousness because the destruction that's happening on the earth and in our planet right now is just a mirror and a picture of the collective humanity, what we're doing to ourselves. Like if we destroy ourselves inside, spiritually, emotionally, mentally, that goes out and ripples out like a wave and an effect, a cause and effect on the rest of the planet. You can see in the rest of the planet the destruction that we have for ourselves on the inside. And then we destroy the earth, we destroy the plants, we destroy the animals. And so my vision for earth, because this painting was so much about how I envision just like healing and health and beauty for this earth and joy. My vision is that humanity would rise above the negativity and we would start to focus and place our focus intentionally on things that are positive, uplifting and build ourselves up, build each other up and build ourselves up. So we're building up our um, health and well-being and then that is going to overflow and ripple into every area of our lives, into every area of the planet. So it's not so much that every human has to be so serious all the time and focus on only what is uh, negative and needs to be fixed and the problems, because the more we focus on those problems, the more those things become more of a reality. So this painting, that kind of goes into the imagination about this painting. This painting is a lot about imagination and it's very important that we imagine for our future and for the next generation's future and for just all and even in the past we can use our imagination to change our past and heal our past but imagining for the future what is ideal and not what is worst case scenario and so then we can live from a place of optimism and we can live from a place of knowing that everything we're doing is contributing to that future and everything that we're saying, speaking, acting, feeling, everything that we're imagining is coming out with our, our words. It's coming out in our sight, in our taste, in our hearing, in our touch, everything that we imagine. Literally, the mind is the center point of how we show up in the world. So being able to imagine ourselves like this girl here, she sees herself in the mirror as a queen. She sees herself in the mirror as a goddess. Why wouldn't we imagine ourselves that way? It's so important to imagine ourselves as our ideal self. Like, I'm not perfect. <laughs> I'll be the first to say I'm not perfect. And it's torn me down so much that I'm out here on YouTube and on Instagram and whatever, saying all these wonderful things and then not always living them. But I live them as much as I can. But just like not only holding ourselves to a higher standard, but actually seeing ourselves at that, as that higher standard. Like I talked about in that first uh, painting, the inner being, our spirit, just knowing that there's a piece of us inside that is so much greater, so much bigger than who we are now. And even though we are that person now, but we're blocking it perhaps with fears and um, just insecurities and stuff. So being able to 
release and get rid of all that stuff so that we're able to live up to our highest potential. And we're losing our imagination and our focus and the sense of sight, like how do we see ourselves, not only as physical beings looking in the mirror, but how do we see ourselves as mental and spiritual beings when we look into the spiritual mirror of our lives and when we see our life reflecting back to us, when we see the destruction of the planet being mirrored back to us, that should be our indicator. Like, okay, maybe I should stop destroying myself. Maybe I should stop destroying the things in my life. Maybe I should be more grateful and content with what I have. And these are all things that I'm still practicing and learning. So being able to see the mirror of what's going on in our reality and understanding that that is giving us an idea of what we're imagining and what we believe is possible, what we believe is reality. Because when you change the beliefs of what you have going on on the inside, it changes what happens on the outside and the external experiences. You're identifying with what shows up in your life in such a different way that everything in your life changes. Your identity changes and your beliefs around everything showing up the way you interpret everything that shows up in your life. When you change how you identify with it, when you change how you see it, everything in turn will change. There's a quote that I really like that says, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. So going back to seeing things from different perspectives, there's some eyeball people walking on these stairways and perhaps they're all looking here in the center at something. It doesn't have to be the earth. It can be anything. I like to think of a lot of people envisioning God, like seeing God in each other's lives and in nature and uh, just in the way that the world works and all the beautiful things, even on the inside, being able to see God. So there's a lot of people that have different ideas of who God is and different words and labels, different things like the love, the almighty, or um, the all-knowing, or the divine, or the one, or truth, or life. Like, you know, all of these different labels, all these different words that really don't actually describe what it is, but all of these people, everyone's mind, connected, centered, looking at this one um, beautiful spirit. And so I would like to think that all of us can connect with one another through our central focus. Like we're all looking at the same thing. The problem is we look over at each other and it's not really a problem. It's actually part of the relativity that we need the differing perspectives cre to create the wholeness and the balance. But, uh, we'll look Sometimes it's distraction. Maybe it's taking our focus off of what is most important in our lives and taking our focus off of the one who, the divine, who is most important and who is on the inside and who is external and internal at the same time. All things are one, nothing separate. So what I was talking about would be a problem, that's not really, is when we look over to our neighbor and think that because they don't have the same perspective as us, that either they're wrong or we're wrong. And the truth is that if I had this analogy of a diamond, if you have multiple sides to an object, um, let's just pick up this paint tube. So one person looking from one direction is seeing the top. One person from one direction is seeing the bottom. One person seeing the sides or maybe like part of this side, but not the whole side, part of this side, you know, because it's round. So you have everyone looking and imagining and perceiving this divine source of love and joy. And all of the perspectives can come together, not only just so that we can create like a giant big little religion, like that's not the point. I didn't even mean to use the word only. It's not to just make a collective um, label because we have plenty of collective labels. and there's always going to be the differing sides and the differing perspectives. But just being able to come together in love, to be able to come together in growth, taking the different perspectives and being like, oh, I can see where they fit together. I can see your side because you're telling me about it, but I've never actually seen your side. I've never had your experiences, but yet I'm able to experience through you 
what you've experienced in the world, how God's worked in your life, how joy has been found by you despite the fear and despite the anxiety and despite the sadness and the cruelty of the world, being able to move beyond that and move beyond how people perceive you and being able to see yourself as who you were truly meant to be and born to be. And also just, um, you know, I <laughs> said something to some people uh, that was inappropriate and I'm too embarrassed to even say what it was, but basically it, it really opened my eyes and I still just think about it all the time because um, it was amazing how I saw something so different than someone else and I had completely pure intention, but it came across to them with such hurt and it's insane to think that those two minds coming together both, even though the situation between us was so uncomfortable, both of us walked away from it. I'm sure I didn't actually ask the person, but I'm sure we both walked away from it with a different perspective, me especially. And that was what I wanted. I'm always looking for new perspectives and sometimes to find those that is tough or you have to go through things that are uncomfortable. But for the most part, when you imagine and believe that growth is easy then, and that growth doesn't have to come through pain, that growth can come through joyous experiences, then that's the kind of experience that you're going to receive in this world. And that's going to be uh, what you're creating in your life. I've talked about this a little bit in the series because it's just stuff I'm learning about um, just how uh, we have more control over our life than we give ourselves credit for and more control over our reactions. So really focus and perception and being able to have an, a spiritual awakened sight is just about seeing everything in love through the lens of love. I love myself. I love these people that are different than me. I love this world that is so beautiful that needs help, but I love it regardless. Just loving everything and seeing everyone, seeing everything through the lens of Christ, as if, as if you were Jesus looking out into the world and saying, yes, I'm connected to this. Yes, I love this. I'll lay down my life for this. Are we able to lay down our lives for the love of this world? It doesn't mean you have to literally give away your physical life um, to save the world or whatever. It just means that you're willing to pour yourself out in service and in surrender and in love for others and being able to pour yourself out regardless of what it feels like or looks like to yourself or others. And of course, there's boundaries that are really important to have. Like you don't just like um, give so much that you're not taking care of yourself. You have to take care of yourself first. And that's really what this whole like this main central part of this painting, like this is the focal point. It's you. It's you in the mirror. Can you look at yourself, take care of yourself first, heal yourself first, and then see the world reciprocate that? Can you see it expand? Can you see it go out into the ethereal realms? Like I was painting, uh, I guess I'll do some close up images, but just this ethereal stuff. I just wanted there to be like no interpretation you don't know what it means. It's just there. It's just light. And uh, another thing that made this painting yellow is just the sense of sight uh, being about light. Like we can only see with light as humans and there's plenty of colors that we can't see. My friend said, make sure you put the rainbow in there because you can see, uh, you know, that's our, our color spectrum, but there's so many colors we can't see. Perhaps there's senses that we can't sense. And there's just so many beautiful things about light that, you know, this is a conceptual painting. You could pick up on anything I'm saying right now and just talk about it, write books about it forever. Because light and love and vision and focus, like just directing our focus on what we want to see and believing, putting belief behind that focus, putting um, concentration into our imagination, using our imagination as a force of power and like a prayer basically is what it is. And just using our imagination as 
something that can benefit the world and benefit each other and benefit ourselves first, of course, because anything that you do for yourself goes out like a ripple effect and affects everyone else in your life and everything and literally the entire planet. And so my vision for the earth, my vision for this world, my imagination, my focus for my art, everything that I want to show up to do in this world is to bring healing to the hearts and minds of individuals that I meet and hopefully a lot of people online and hopefully um, a lot of people as I travel, you know, but individuals like people just um, everyone, you know, it can be overwhelming to know how many people are in the world and try to connect with all of everyone, you know, it's a lot, but everyone I come in contact with, I want to be able to see them in the true light, be able to see them in love and be able to see their highest potential coming out. And of course, fear has held me back in the past, uh, insecurities, uh, they do that, you know, and Every day I'm working on moving past them, and you can too, and all of us can. It's just uh, sometimes, you know, like even just making this video, I've talked about it before, it was really scary to be in front of a camera, and now it's not. And now it's almost more scary to be in front of real people than in front of a camera. But I know you guys that are watching are also real people. I also wanted just to add one last thing about the magnifying glass. And just to remind us, that we want to magnify the things in our life that are positive, that build us up, that worship and praise God, that bring awe and wonder and beauty into the world and just magnify wonderful things. We don't want to magnify the obstacles. We don't want to magnify the problems. We don't want to place our focus on the issues. We want to magnify the love that is inside of us and the light that is inside of us. And that's just a point that I wanted to make sure to place in this video. Thank you so much for watching. I think this is about as much as I want to go into this piece for now. And also the writing on this piece is very, I think, beautiful. I might do a little video about that as well. I might put in this video when else. But anyways, thank you so much for watching and being a part of this video and uh, caring about my art and what I'm doing. So definitely uh, <laughs> send me your comments and on this piece and yeah just send me your comments on this piece and let me know what you think and let me know what you think about what I said and about just everything and have a wonderful rest of your time this week and day or whatever in this moment this is a perfect present moment be happy yeah